Tandem Nomads, episode 77. I felt so happy that it was clear to me, it became clear to me at one point that this is what I want to do and this is what, what fills me with energy and motivation. This is what my life is, basically. Welcome to Tandem Nomads, the podcast show for expat partners. Every new episode is launched twice a month on Tuesdays. You will find here great inspiration and tips to build your portable career and thrive with your family in your global nomadic life. Hello, Nomad Nation. This is Emel Deregui, and our guest today is Claudia Londini. Claudia, are you ready for the ride? I'm ready, Amel. Hi. So today's episode is all about how to take care of your purpose, discover your purpose, but also make it portable because we know that it's one thing to find your purpose. It's another thing to be able to continuing it while moving from a country to another. And Londini has a great story to share with us and, and amazing insights. So uh, let me tell you a little bit about her before. So Claudia comes from Italy, where she was an interpreter and developed her career in humanitarian missions for the International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies and for the Danish organization Dan. Dutch, uh, Dan Church 8. Uh, she then quit her career to move abroad with her husband and two sons. They have been traveling together since 1989 and lived in Sudan, Angola, Guinea-Bissau, Congo, Honduras, Peru, uh, Jerusalem. And today, Claudia and her husband are empty nesters and live in Jakarta, Indonesia. So a lot of, a lot of travels. <laughs> so while moving from a country to another, Claudia developed her career as a coach and intercultural trainer. She also founded in 2004 <laughs> an amazing platform for all expat women around the world called Expat Click. The purpose was to create a place where expat women could support uh, each other through all the aspects of their moves and and life abroad. So they provide each other resources, information, and inspiration. Today, Expat Click counts over 2,000 members and developed into various activities and specific platforms like Expat Books, Expat Table, Expat Women at Work, and what expats can do. So Claudia, I try to be very concise in trying to introduce you is there anything i missed here <laughs> no no i no i think you said it all yeah yeah yeah. it's okay it, I, actually by listening to you i <laughs> sometimes i realize I, how old i am <laughs> <laughs> how many years have gone by and how many countries have visited no but you have it all yeah actually there's just one thing i did not i did not actually start by working with the international red cross that was the result of me joining my husband yeah. I was working as an interpreter in Milan, and then I joined him in Africa, and, oh. and, and, and there I started working in the, in the humanitarian field until my children were born. Wow. Okay, so you did try it. So tell us while we're there, how was it for you then, the beginning of this journey when you had to quit your interpreter uh, career? Uh, how are things for you? How did you process that whole first steps? Well, uh, I guess it was not very difficult for me to leave my interpreting job in Milan because I was very motivated to follow my husband, but also because I had realized that probably working as an interpreter was not really my um, my favorite thing. Um, I discovered that I had this uh, push towards others, and uh, that was the time of the uh, Sahel uh, drought. So there were lots of images all around, you know, the, the media of dying children, etc. So when I joined my husband in Africa, I actually realized that I felt much uh, better in a kind of life where I was in contact, in direct contact with. Uh, uh, with these harsh realities, and especially if I could do something for um, for the people, even with my my small contribution, yeah, so it was not really difficult. Th that's a good point, actually, because I heard a lot of expat partners telling me that um, sometimes it is difficult to give up what you've built before, but it's also an opportunity to also rethink what we really want to do with our lives and our career. And and uh, apparently, this has worked well for you. It has, it has, yes, definitely, because it also led me to discover aspects of my uh, of my personality that uh, I don't know uh, that I didn't know about before, you know, before going and living in another culture, and especially in those harsh conditions. That's interesting. So tell us, how did you? Um 
yeah, how did you tr discover yourself, like you say, and discover that true purpose of yours? And what is it actually? Mm -hmm. uh, well, it took me a while. Uh, I, I understood quite uh, quite immediately that I would be I would feel fulfilled just in a kind of work that would put me in contact with the others, uh, and where I could help others. Um, so that was quite clear from the very beginning of my of my life of my mobile life. Let's say when I joined my husband, um, I then stopped working for quite a long time for 15 years actually because I had my my two children and um, and I wanted to be with them. We've always lived in quite complex countries, so uh, so I, I decided just to give a break to my career and to. Uh, Uh, and to be with them. When I started to work again, when I decided to go back to the to 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 work, um, I asked myself, what what do I like to do, and what am I good at? And uh, and I realized that actually I had I had accumulated a big big experience in relocating. This is what I uh, what I had been doing a lot, and what I like to do. Um, and I thought that uh, I. I probably would, uh, would have to find a, a job that gave me the uh, opportunity to use this uh, capital, this, this, this treasure that I had accumulated to help others be as happy as I had been. So that was like, uh, yeah, the highlight in my, in my, in my life. Uh, in a way, I realized that I wouldn't, I could have never gone back, you know, just to translate or to interpret, um, or even to work, you know, in an office, uh, in an embassy, or you know, any, not not these kinds of mm. of uh, jobs that you do just for the sake of being occupied. Yeah, that's uh, I wanted something to put me in contact with people and especially that allowed me to use my experience in something mm. meaningful. So that's when I discovered that actually my, my, my purpose actually in life and in work is to be able to connect my experience to others, to communities, to use my experience to be uh, able to help others, inspire others, um, suggest, you know, possibilities uh and, and and grow in this mutual exchange yeah that's really i like the two things that you said about i f i try to figure out what i like and what i'm good at and i think this is an important question to ask ourselves what do we are what are we passionate about and what are we really good at and that's our the two key questions i think to start working in a meaningful like you said and purposeful career yeah. uh, is to ask ourselves those two questions so how did that lead you to create expat click Expert Click actually came at the same time uh, when I was uh, looking for a definition for my uh, professional path. Uh, I had already started way before Expert Click, I had started another network for women uh, leading, moving to Africa because I had a big experience in Africa and I had realized how I, I had discovered how difficult it can be in such conditions, especially with babies. So, um, So then I, I thought uh, I would I would probably I wanted to develop this project into something more global, uh, and especially at the beginning I thought to do it for Italian women because at that time I'm talking about 2003 to 2004, and there were not all the socials and things that we have today. So at that time there was very little, especially for Italian women. Um, so I was looking in the net. And I, and I stumbled across a website in French that, that I really liked and that had uh, more or less the concept that I wanted to create for Italian women. And so to make a long story short, me and the founder of that website joined Energies, joined Visions, and we created Experts Click, uh, which actually is the, contains all the, uh, all the, um, all the values that I was actually also trying to express professionally, except that it is not a professional project, it's a non-voluntary project, but the two things go hand in hand, you know, that, that my career, which came immediately after the founding of Expert Click and Expert Click itself, they are, uh, 
two faces of the same coin. They're, they're both um, motivated by my by my basic values, by by this. Yeah. yeah. People, that's really interesting, actually. And this is why I found I really wanted to have you on Tandem Nomads to share that how, how a nonprofit project can serve your career. And, um, and tell us, yeah, tell us how, did, how could that be the two phases of your coin? How mm. did you do that? Um, well, basically, as I said, because, because both are moved by the same vision. Uh, the idea of, uh, of, of creating Experts Clique and developing it uh, was to help, uh, to help expert women and their families go through experiences abroad in a positive way, in an enriching way, and without you know, fear or, you know, or, 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 or stress. Uh, what I started doing right after as an intercultural trainer first and as a coach later is, is practically the same thing. Uh, I, help, I help women and men uh, to go through the ups and downs of mobile life uh, and to face changes or to make sense of their, of their, uh, of their lives abroad. Um, Expert clinic is connected to my profession in that it is like um, it is like a, a mirror where people can see what I've been doing um, all these years of working in the expert community, you know, of writing articles, um, suggesting things, and and, uh, and assisting people uh, are all documented in the website. So, it, on one side, it helps me. Uh, it helps me gain my clients because it's uh, it's uh, it's a place where people can really see what I have been doing for 13 years. Uh, they can see my style. They can see what I have been dealing with. Yeah. Um, and on the other hand, it's also a way that keeps me in contact with the expert community at large. So it always keeps me uh, updated, you know, to what uh, about what are the feelings and the shifts and the changings in the expert community which is also very important for me. It's, it's like, in a way, it's like, a, how can I say, a training for me, you know, for my work. It keeps me always uh, uh, updated on what is going on. And, um, and it's actually been through Experts Clique that I've been able to, uh, to see all the changes in the mobile world in these last, uh, you know, 13, 15 years. And su- subsequently to create more projects to accommodate to all these changes. That's interesting. We'll talk about that because it did develop. Expat Click has developed in so many different branches and everything. So we're going to go into details. But before I would like to ask you, it's kind of interesting to see how your platform, which is a nonprofit platform, which is helping you know, thousands of, um, of, of women uh, with their moves and everything. But my question is, why didn't you think of doing it as a company? <laughs> um, because... When we launched it in 2004, uh, all these things that exist today did not exist then. There was no concept of a startup. There was there were no resources online to uh, to launch your business. There were no socials. There, um, it was really a, a, a whole world that was just about to start. So. Um, we didn't have actually the the means and the resources to uh, to even think, you know, of creating something profitable. Um, myself and the other women I have created Experts Click with, we, we are not we are not trained as interpreters. Far from that, <laughs> we have very different backgrounds, but none uh, contemplates, you know, being successful interpreters. Um, so what we thought, you know, for us, it was just the, the natural thing to do, to launch it as uh, a non-profit platform um, and then see what, what, what would happen. And, uh, yeah, and what happened was that it all went very, very fast and we managed it in the middle of, you know, um, relocations, uh, uh, changes, uh, divorces, not mine, luckily, um, you know, lots of, lots of changes in our lives. Um, 
And so we just sort of uh, kept on this way and we got to a point where we really, we really wanted to keep it that way because we realized that we all could have professions and careers outside of Experts Click, but that the, the, the value of Experts Click and the vision of having something that is accessible to everybody and, uh, um, and that promotes you know, values of, uh, of voluntary work, of solidarity, um, of communalities, is something that, uh, that was important to us. And, of course, turning it into a business, into a profitable business, business would have probably changed also the, 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 the purpose, the relationships amongst us, um, and would have probably put attention on the project that we were not really ready and we are still not ready to face. We don't, we don't want to face it. We want to keep it like that, you know. It's yeah. a voluntary thing. People can come and go. Uh, we do what we can. And we know that if, you know, if there is a moment where we cannot devote all of our time to experts click because we have other things to do and other, you know, family matters, it's okay because we have been doing so much voluntarily, you know, people will just understand and accept that. Yeah, that's so, that's yeah. That's, in a way, it's a completely different concept. Yeah, I, I love it because I think that's also a smart move. In a way, you say that you didn't have necessarily the tools and everything, but you were innovative enough in early stage to think of building an online platform. First of all, I will go into that a bit later, but um, I love how you also said. I think the nonprofit model is a great model to serve your purpose, serve the people you want to help. Uh, but also it helps you, like you said, to be able to go through the changes of your life without having that, the, that pressure of having to, to deliver all the time. People know that you're doing it voluntarily and giving your time and your, your partners are giving their time to be able to help. But, but when you're too busy and have your own life to deal with, then you have less pressure. And I think that's a smart move. Nonetheless, it did help you develop your career and, and, and uh, your coaching and training programs because it was, a, a, I guess, first of all, a source of learning for you, but also a source of exposure of your expertise, as you said earlier. So this mm -hmm. is really great. Um, and you said two things that I really loved, and you said repeatedly is these two keywords for me, which is really important, uh, which is vision and mission. Um, how did you work on your vision and your mission? You talked a lot about the importance of the vision. This is what helped you, uh, you know, live for so long. It's been since 2004. So, and there's very few platforms that can exist for so long. So do you have any insights to share on how to work mm -hmm. on that vision and your mission, especially when you're working with other people and those mm -hmm. values? Uh, I would say that it, it came, um, it came, because I, I, I listened very closely to my reactions to what I was doing. And I realized that in the long term, there was nothing that should click. Uh, whereas during these years, I, you know, I tried a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And, um, and of course, um, I worked in different in different uh, in different uh, areas. Uh, I realized with time that my work for Expert Click is the thing that mattered the most to me, uh, and so I realized that by 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 doing what I do, you know, by writing an article, by contacting people, by answering the emails, and all these things that I've been doing for years, I felt so happy that it was clear to me, it became clear to me at one point that this is what I want to do and this is what, what fills me with energy and motivation. This is what my life is, basically. So, um, yeah, I, I listened to myself. I, I, I collected the, the enthusiasm at the end of the day Uh, and you know it's 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 incredible because I, I start having a certain age. I mean, years go very quickly, so uh, I'm well beyond half a century, and uh, and I've been working on this project every single day since it started, and sometimes you know many many hours a day. Uh, but I'm still the one in my team that keeps on launching new ideas. And that just gets enthusiastic as a child whenever we do something new. Today we launched a photographic round robin, you know, about colors. I thought, you know, uh, with all these 
sad things happening and a little bit of colors might cheer us up. Mm-hmm. And, and I was so excited and, and we had so many pictures, you know, posted on the Facebook group and I kept on going back and seeing and, you know, and checking the names of the people that had posted it and the comments that came along. And I just felt so full of energy and so motivated. So I, this is what I've been doing the years go by, the more I realize that. The only insight that I would like to share is that, uh, you know, you, you should always listen to what uh, your heart jumps at, to what makes you happy, even if this is something that doesn't bring you money or other kinds of material rewards. And if you are as lucky as I have been to be able to save a little bit of your time uh, to work on it, uh, then, you know, just, you know, just, just go ahead and do it. And even if it is not something that brings you uh, a material reward straight away, it will always help you in many, many other ways. Particularly it brings me, brings me customers. Um, it's, the, it's the place where people find me, you know, yeah. I would say that 80% of, of my, of my clients come from there. They find my articles and then they contact me. And um, yeah, and it's also the place where I have basically written all of my life. I started writing when my when my children were three and eight, and I keep on writing now that they are you know that they yeah. live outside and and they're and they're adults. So it's amazing. All of my life is concentrated on that on that platform, you know. So it's it's a good um, it's a good card. It's uh, amazing. Like you say, visiting card for yeah. Yeah. So your your whole journey is in theirs, <laughs> and I'm sure yeah, the journey of is. a lot of other women who have participated to this platform. So could we, before we go in details, to explain maybe more a bit of tips on the technical aspects and how you develop it and how you grew it? Uh, could you explain us a bit more uh, what Expect Click is about and how it works? Expert Click is the core project and it's a platform that wants their experiences abroad. And this is a very broad concept and I will, I will go into it now because it would take me a long time. But basically what we do is to um, inform people through articles, through uh, answering emails, um, comfort people. We have a support group, an online support group. Uh, that meets once a month and discusses, uh, you know, issues linked to to relocating. Um, we provide contacts. Uh, we promote contacts, um, and we organize missions uh, and to show how nice it is to, you know, to to yeah to dive into diversity and to discover new cultures. Mm. Um, so this is basically the core concept, and then we developed many other uh, initiatives around it um, because we saw with time that things were changing. And for instance, one of the things that we realized quite quickly was that uh, if women at the beginning, when we launched Expert Click, were very worried about practice information and things like where shall I put my child in which school shall I send my child or shall I find an hospital in this place then then the priorities slowly shifted and 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 expert women started being more worried about their professional identities so the questions moved to uh, shall I be able to work in uh, in my next country uh, I, I am afraid that I will feel useless without my work and all these kinds of things. So we thought, you know, to address this and to provide a place where women could interact if they wanted to build something abroad, their professional identities abroad. So we launched Expert Women at Work, which is basically a platform, um, a very humble and small platform where we give a little bit of visibility and we sort of exchange tips and uh, um, and get together if we need a professional woman to help us advancing in our careers. Um, and after that, we launched uh, uh, expertbooks.org, which is simply a virtual uh, bookshop uh, or library, library, because we don't sell books, we just suggest, we just ask people to send us and send us their titles 
uh, both of the books that have been written by experts, because actually there has been a boom, as you know, a, a big a big development in, in writing by experts. So, so many experts now write about their experiences and we want to promote that. But also titles that we discover while living in the countries. You know, there are many, many interesting titles that can really help you to get lovely insights on the culture where you're about to move and that maybe you don't know about because you do not live in the country yet, but that you would like, you know, to have on hand before moving. So this is what we do. We, we just we basically share titles. And then, uh, and then we, we launch what experts can do because we believe that times are changing and also the role of the expert person must adapt to all the big uh, changes that we have witnessed. And we believe that as experts, we have a privileged uh, view on the world. You know, we can see firsthand what really happens and we can convey uh, our what we see in, in simple ways to people who do not have the chance to travel and to see the world with their own eyes. And, and so we are actually, we are exactly in the right place to promote empathy uh, towards the other because we know exactly what it means to arrive in a place and not know anything about it, not knowing how to function in it. So we would like to find ways through this project to uh, employ these lessons that we learn as experts. So mm. that was the last project that we launched. And then we already had... A, a gastronomical section on Expert Click, and we recently turned it into a project per se, which is called Expat mm-hmm. Um and which basically, yes, collects gastronomical experiences around the world, but seen from a cultural point of view. So seeing how they are linked to the local culture that we are so lucky to mm-hmm. discover. So let's say that Expert Click remains as the, as the main point and all these other projects turn around it. Yeah, that's fascinating. I think you, when you said that you you didn't necessarily have the entrepreneurial, um, you know, skills, but I think this is one of the biggest quality of an entrepreneur is to have the vision, like we said, but also to be able to adapt to the changes of the market and the needs of the people you're serving. So this is, I think, the the biggest reason of the success of Expat Click is that you have adapted it and offered the platforms that are necessary for them to find what they need. And, and, uh, and it all gravitated around the mission and your vision that is, like you said, all about empathy and supporting each other. And then there are so many different ways to support each other and you developed it. So that's amazing. But now I want to know how you managed to do it because that's a Thank lot you. to handle. <laughs> so how did you manage to do it yourself and how did you manage to include other people to support you? Because that's a lot of work. Mm. It's a lot of work and actually, yeah, uh, this is one of the main difficulties that we have um, because Experts Click has developed through the years from an original platform. Uh, the big challenge has been to move forward without losing all we all we had with limited fundings because you know as we said Experts Click is a non-profit so we've never had uh, enough fundings to really you know go to the best uh, technician go to the best webmaster we've always tried to cope as we could with the limited fundings that we had. Uh, we try to keep it as simple as possible. Um, so, and this maybe has a cost on our on our e- official image, meaning that we are certainly not in a position to have all the most modern uh, uh, tools and tricks um, and things that you know a, a, a modern and performing website has. Um, it looks so, very we, good. I, honestly, it doesn't look as remote as that. Um, <laughs> I, I, I can tell you. So don't worry about. No, it's 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 not that bad. Honestly, <laughs> it's no, really good. No. Yeah, we are. Yeah, yeah. We 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 try, and we are supported by. Uh, we have a nice, a good webmaster. And, uh, and of course, you know, we have to keep it as, as, uh, uh, as decent as possible. Um, but yeah, 
we keep it simple, meaning that we use WordPress. We use WordPress for 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 our platforms. All of our platforms are are on WordPress. Uh, we use the socials. Um, we have uh, we have a, a go to meeting account that we use for our meetings. Uh, you know, as I was mentioning, we have this support group, and so we are able to host. Uh, quite a number of people that we meet to to discuss and, uh, and 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 cry together. Sometimes we laugh also, but it's mostly crying because it's you know it's a it's a moment where we can you know share our emotions and our difficulties. So um, and yes, that's basically it. Uh, yeah. Nothing complicated. Uh, um, yeah. So how did you have love. to learn? How, yeah, that's the love. That's true. <laughs> When you love and you're passionate, you always find solutions. That's the amazing thing about, you know, working for your purpose and, 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 and working around it. But technically, how did you learn about what you had to do to be able to, to make it happen? And I'm sure your technology evolved with time, too. Oh yeah. Well, I uh, I just learned it partially. I mean, I, I am, I'm able to manage uh, part of it and I rely on... Uh, on other colleagues and on our webmaster to do the most complicated things. Um, I just learned, you know, with time, I just learned uh, a long time ago when, you know, all these WordPress and things did not exist. I learned the basic of HTML, but very, very basically. And then, you know, I just learned with the, with the, with the motivation of, do, of doing it. I just wanted to learn how to, you know, how to put articles on. And I must say, I've got very, very good colleagues. I mean, I have got very good partners who, uh, who go at a great length to learn and to always be uh, present to solve technical problems in this kind of thing. So, yeah. So tell us about that part. How did you manage to get people involved and volunteer and, and be part of this and support you in growing this vision that you had and... and and growing expectantly. Mm. Well, actually, what we usually do is just we wait for people to get uh, contaminated <laughs> by the enthusiasm and by the and by the the message of Expert Click. Um, and then when they come forward, uh, there's always a place for them, you know, if they want to collaborate. We, we have different different levels of collaboration because, of course, we are very the team is very small. We are we are ten people. Uh, but we have a lot, a lot of, of people around that, you know, collaborate in other ways, mm. uh, sending articles, proofreading, translating, uh, sending information, you know, assisting people, arriving in places, you know, a lot of, of informal and hidden work that, that goes on behind, mm. and behind the scenes. Um, we've had many more volunteers in the past uh, um, we've had moments where we were very very little you know um, it's them how, <laughs> how nice it is one of the things that has limited a little bit the participation in the team in the team itself is that we have decided to use Italian as the uh, lingua franca to communicate uh, within the team because it was becoming really impossible for me to translate, you know, and and not all of the of the team members spoke English, so it was it was really a lot of a lot of work. Uh, so little by little, we sort of filtered, and now we are not only Italians in the team, but uh, all the the people that are not Italian, the team members that are not Italian, speak Italian. Or can understand Italian. So this is a little bit limiting because we have many good people around that would like to, to do something more, to get more involved, but uh, it's difficult only with English. So, mm. um, so yeah, we, we try to cope. We, <laughs> we try to arrange things as they go. Uh, but as I said, you know, we have many, many, many people that just work voluntarily uh, behind the scene uh, and they do what they can and they do what what is in their uh, in their frame of interest I say yeah. Yeah. That's, that's another thing that's interesting about expat click is that it's multilingual so there's a lot of languages for expat click so you have English obviously Italian I think Spanish too right 
And what's the other language? Spanish and French, yes. French. So it's a French. great platform with many languages. And, and that's also the great value, I think, of Expat Click. Um, but now, how did you grow your audience? How did you manage to get to over 2,000 members uh, part of it? So what, what are the strategies you implemented to build that platform? Uh, We've um, we've had many many technical issues that have sort of uh, slowed down the the uh, the ranking, uh, but um, I, I would say that the the the, the, uh, the name of Expertly has built through the years. We have helped so many people, uh, and these people sometimes come back. You know, the other day a lady. Uh, came and she said, oh, well, you helped me in, in 2007 when I moved to, I can't remember where, and now I just, you know, typed in your name to see if you still exist, and here you are, and I come back to you to ask for help because I'm moving again. So uh, let's say that all these people that have touched Expert Click through the years, they uh, know about us, and they come back, and they, and they promote us in a way. You know, many, many people just suggest us as a good website um, to help expat women. Mm -hmm. uh, the word and of then, mouth is working. Yeah, and, and of course our articles are, uh, are articles of, we really uh, care about the content. So, you know, we do not publish articles just to have Uh, to have more visitors and to and to have more ranking, we do publish articles that we really care about. We we really care about the content, uh, the information. We try to keep the information updated, um, and so that pays back also. You know, not only in terms of ranking of of of, tra of, tra of traffic, but also in terms of uh, of trust that we build in people. So mm. uh, yeah. So and, and then you know. Yeah. It's much easier with the socials today, you know, with, with Facebook. Social and media, yeah. It's incredible yeah. how the expat click has evolved over time and over the, you know, technology, how um, it, it, it's just amazing. And on top of it, and this is why I like to say that you have a portable purpose, you manage to do it while moving from a country to another. So that is really amazing. And I think to answer a little bit your question, the question I asked you in a different way, I would really say that your platform has grew from delivering value. And I think that's the number one thing when you want to develop either a business or, or a nonprofit, focus on de delivering value and the audience will be there. You know, uh, if you're helpful, it's, marketing is not only about having techniques, but it's also about the content, like you said. It's about uh, delivering what people really need uh, and being really authentic in that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. true. <laughs> so um, that's it. That's, we've been covering a lot of things, but what would be your advice to other expat partners who want to build something purposeful, meaningful for them, uh, be it through a business or a nonprofit? What would be your advice after having done this for so many years? Oh, well, <laughs> so many things. No, well, I, I would tell them to... Um, To always check their motivation, to always to always be close to them to the reasons why they uh, move abroad, and and always make sure that wherever they go and whatever the situation, they find a meaning in it. And uh, um, in the hardest situation, you know, even in the most painful situation, because, you, you, you know, we, we all go through very painful situations, especially because we live abroad, you know, we, that's why we're away and our children have problems adapting. And so it's also a lot of, of, of pain in the, in the adventure. But no matter what, there is always and there must always be a, a meaning to to what you are doing, to what to, to your to your mobile life, and and you should always try to be connected to it, you know. And of course, there are moments of confusions that mm -hmm. probably um, hamper your capacity of of building of building projects, be be them you know profitable or just uh, uh, or just things that you love to do. Um, but if you really try to to be close to your to your to your purpose to to the meaning of that uh, of, of of what you're doing and never to forget why uh, you why you left in the first place, 
uh, then you know things come 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 easier yeah definitely yeah. yeah that's a very good very very good advice thank you for that and is there any I, I know you mentioned for example WordPress are there other tools that are helpful for you um, to develop expat click online tools Mm, well, I would say that GoToMeeting has been a very important part of our of our work because we use it both uh, with my team when we uh, when we meet. You know, we meet once a month to discuss the destiny of this poor website. <laughs> so we use GoToMeeting, and and also because it gives us a chance to 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 promote online online events. Uh, I would say that. A platform because Skype is good, but it's not really 100% reliable. Yeah. Uh, with GoToMeeting, you can do you can do much more. Definitely. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's that. a great tool. GoToMeeting and WordPress. Um, so you have membership, and WordPress does provide you a tool to be able to develop like memberships, like have everybody have their own account, right? So very good. So yes. that's great. Yes, yeah, yeah, definitely. And, and 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 also Mailchimp actually. We've been using Mailchimp quite a lot. Yeah, for newsletters. So Mailchimp is the platform to be able to send your newsletter to everybody. This is great. So it, it's quite amazing to see yeah. how you managed to start from your purpose and make it portable and build this amazing platform that's helping so many people. Um Oh, before we say goodbye, is there any book you would recommend that's maybe related or not to what we discussed today? Hmm. Uh, I thought about that. Uh, many people are, but you know, every time uh, I have to think of a book, uh, the first book that comes to my mind, which is my favorite book, absolutely, uh, is about intercultural encounters and uh, and and in a way, you know, moving your identity from one place to the other. Uh, and it's Lost in Translation uh, by Eva Hoffman. She's a um, Jewish Polish lady who left Poland when she was 13 in the 50s, I guess, because she must be older than me now, yeah, uh, and moved to Canada. And this book is her account, is the account of how she adapted to, uh, to a new culture, basically. Mm -hmm. And it's a, a great book where really, I would, yeah, I would recommend it to anyone who finds herself dealing with, with a different culture or dealing with you know developing her own identity in a different culture it's full of interesting insights and uh yeah suggestions and and, and 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 events that can really uh can really help Fantastic. So Nomad Nation, I will put all the links of all the resources in the book that Claudia um, has recommended to you. Just the last question, Claudia, are you looking for volunteers? Well, yes, yes, we are always, yes, yes, always, because, you know, our projects grow, uh, can grow much, much better. Uh, I wouldn't say faster, but better yes. the, the more we are. So, yes, yes, if anybody's interested in collaborating in any way, just please come to me and I'll be more than Wonderful. happy to so what's them in the big expert click family. Yeah. Fantastic. Do they have to speak Italian? Uh, not necessarily. No, no. Okay. I mean, uh, depending on depending on, on on the role that they want to to cover, we'll see. You know, okay. but they can always learn it. You know, we Wonderful. practice linguistic empathy on expert clicks. <laughs> <laughs> That's very good, linguistic <laughs> empathy. <laughs> okay, and, and so, what's the best way to reach you if you want to volunteer or to use the platform and and, and discover it? What's the mm -hmm. where should we send? Just just go to expertclick.com click is a c-l-i-c without k in the end expertclick.com and there you can find my profile and the profile of, of all the other team members mm -hmm. and the email where where we can be contacted and also see a little bit what we do and all our projects uh, and uh, yeah and how we work fantastic so thank you so much Claudia this was really inspiring to talk to you such an amazing project and and uh, I wish you a long life um, and and a lot of success I can't wait to see this platform grow even bigger <laughs> Thank you very, very much. It's been really a pleasure. Nomad Nation, I hope that you found the great insights of our guest today really useful to you. I would love to actually hear about what you think about it. So leave your comment in the webpage of this episode. And I hope to meet you at the next one. So stay tuned to turn your challenges into great opportunities.